I wonder if a lot of people really know the privileges, the advantages of being a child of God. The wonderful things that God keeps for those who love him. Because anyway, as God himself has said, we can't even start to fathom how many wonderful things he's ready to do for them. The abundance of his favors upon them. If we knew, we would have even sought for more ways to please God, to walk with him, to obey him in all things. We wouldn't go along with all of these theories of uh, commandments are necessary, commandments have been wiped away, you don't need any commandments. I don't know how many people have known that the commandments of God are written in the hearts of men. If God writes his commandments in your heart, does it look like something that he has wiped away? Or is he writing it just for the fun of it? No, that you may obey him. Don't let anybody come and tell you there are no commandments and you agree. The fellow is misleading you. And don't allow yourself to be misled by fools. Today we are going to read Isaiah chapter 49, verse 23. Isaiah 49, 23. Kings shall be your foster fathers. And their queens, your nursing mothers, they shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. They shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Because you look at the first part, kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens shall be your nursing mothers. And you say, Lord, every king must be my foster father. Every queen must be my nursing mother. You know those kind of prayers that you hear people praying? You make so much noise, there's a condition to it. I usually say, and you search through the Bible, you find it to be absolutely correct. God does not give you a promise without attaching the conditions to it, letting you know what will make it function. We have these ideas that you can live your life anyhow you live and wake up and tell God, do something, and he does. Those kind of things float through our heads. Does that make sense? Even to you, does it make sense? Anyhow you live, God does not mind. God does mind how you live. Yes, kings will be foster fathers to you. Their queens will be your nursing mothers. There's a condition. The kings will even bow down to you. Lord, as I'm going to that office now, everybody must agree to what I have said. My word must be. You said they will bow down to me. All of them will bow down to me. They will lick the dust of my feet. Yee! When you are done with it, you go there and come back and feel disappointed. All the prayers, I prayed all night. The Lord did not even answer. Nothing happened. The people did not even want to see me. They rejected me. I don't know if God is still answering prayers. How is your life? Check. Because the last part says, they shall not be ashamed who waits for me. Are you ashamed? You were not waiting for him. And some of us think we wait for God because of the way we think we are doing it. Like I said, I prayed all night. I was waiting upon the Lord. The last three days, I was fasting for it. How is your life? You are fasting. How is your life? You prayed all night. Who is the person who waits for God? Is the person who obeys him. Are you of the congregation of those who say there is nothing to obey any longer? You live your life anyhow. Yeah, go ahead. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your life away. Because the promises of God will not come to you. They will not come to pass in your life. And it will still look to you like God is not, I don't know, keeping to his own words. Like the word of God does not come to pass. And you look at the other person. The fellow is even worse than me. And God is doing things for him or her. Do you know the person? You know the surface of every human being, not beyond that. Who the person really is in God, you don't know. So how can you say that God is favoring that person more than you? How can you judge another person of his spiritual life when you don't know anything about the spirituality of anyone? Indeed, you have seen the person walk on the road. You might even see the person laugh somewhere and say, ah, that one is always laughing. God is always doing things for him or her. 
You don't know that one. Know yourself. How do you walk with God? For those that wait for me, how do you wait for God? By fasting when you think you have a problem. By going to church when you think you have a problem, that's when you become a wonderful church member. And when the problems are eased off, you are on your own. Or you even go to church consistently. How is your relationship with God directly? Your personal relationship with him? That is the issue that must be settled here. All of these other things will happen. When he says kings will take care of you, queens will take care of you, they bow down to you. He's talking about the top of the world, the best of the world, the best of the best will refer to you, will defer to you in every situation. Can you live a life such that all of the tops will defer to you? Yes. But that will happen by God, not because of what you think you can do, not the prowess that you think you can come up with. Anyway, what can you do that another person cannot do? But when you wait upon God, the little you do, God magnifies it. God makes it different. The person who hears you is hearing something different because that thing goes along with the Spirit of God which magnifies that same little thing. And it becomes better than the best that you can find anywhere else. And everybody is referring to it. That's how they lick the dust of your feet. Wait for God. Do the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. Obey him. Keep his commandments. Do what God requires. Don't be driven and tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Hold on to the word of God as is, the way it is. Leave the interpretations of men that tell you, don't bother. God does not bother. God bothers about everything that you find in the scripture. Ah, that part of the scripture had passed away. Somebody has had a bad dream. Jesus said, not one word, not a dot of the entire scripture will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, it will remain. So somebody wakes up and tells you that side pass away. Who is the fellow? Wiser than Jesus or more God than God? The word of God stands forever. Follow the word of God. That is how you wait for God. And if you wait for God, guaranteed, God will elevate you and all will bow down to you and for you. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.